Direct OTR. Adam Reed, same thing, and congratulations. You got a new job. You're the host of Kitchen Spaces on the Learning Channel. Because of this show. So really? thank you How, how's that? Uh, they saw the show and they called my agent, and I'm looking forward to more options. So you so. are a guest on the show and you get a better job than me. That's how how does that work out? That's that makes me mad. That's how it works. Mark Render, I love your job because everyone loves your organization. It's called Right to Play. You're the di director, uh, the deputy director, and you've just got back from where? Uh, from Tanzania. Awesome. Tell us more about that later on. Not surprisingly, Paul Maurice, you just heard him, likes his team. 30 coaches in July. They all do. Last year at this time, Ken Hitchcock thought his Flyers would surprise and Gerard Gallant thought it was going to be a good year in Columbus. We know how that worked out. After two post-lockout failures, has Toronto improved it up with Toscala, Mark Bell, and Jason Blake to be positive about the future? I, th I think they've improved enough to be positive about the immediate future because I still think that overall they're a fairly aged team and they're good enough now, I think, with the improvements they've made, the slight alterations, to be a playoff team considering they narrowly missed last year. If you're talking about are they a Stanley Cup contender? No. Are uh, they no, a playoff I, I, contender? I, I, yes. I'd have to agree to a certain degree with what you're saying, but I'd also have to disagree in the sense that a big problem with the Maple Leafs has always been managed. It's always been the hierarchy of command that Ferguson doesn't have control over his team. These are trades. I mean, the Rask trade, uh, Toscala, we saw it before when the opening sequence with Balfour and Raycroft. This has been a story franchise that's always made the same mistakes. And I think we were talking about this earlier in the sense that the, the main core of players on this team is back. There's question mark with Matt Sundin. You've got McCabe, who's overly paid. And you've got a goalie that we still don't know to this degree. You can cannot do it. blame. You can't say management has always forever been the problem. Eventually, at some point, you've got to bring it to the players. And so many teams in the NHL have stepped up and have done it when they weren't supposed to. Right. This team never has. And, you know, I think you can indict Andrew Raycroft for not having a very good year last year. Tosqua, I think, was a good acquisition only because he can play, but it is an indictment that yeah, Raycroft those, those, didn't work out. Those three guys are going to help the team, obviously, but right. I think it's more in a whole team concept. If those, all those guys play better, they will be better. And but, like you said, they're not going to win the Stanley Cup. So they're not, they might make the playoffs, but... I'm surprised, Mark, honestly, I'm surprised that you turn around and say that it's not management because it's everybody knows that it's clear that there's a serious so problem in management in the hierarchy, Toronto, the way that they run their team. Ferguson wasn't even given a contract, Toronto, no, an extension in, contract compared to Maurice. People in Toronto always want to blame the management, and it's never the guys on the ice. And it's but always if they're not cast. putting on a product on the ice that's eventually, satisfying the demand, why are they not being held accountable? They have. They are, being, a, they are being held accountable. How many changes has this happened for? John Ferguson's been here, what, two years? Last year was the first year that he had the chance to build his own team. Right. right. Fine. So he got tossed. He's done the job there. If Mark Bell flops again, not good. Well, Jason Blake. How many Blake, passes? Uh, right. Let me interrupt because the question, the question was not to revisit the past. The question was to look ahead. And I, I think John has made some outstanding moves in this offseason. Uh, Jason Blake, no one's going to say that's a bad move. 40 goals, inspirational type player. Vesa Toscala, an upgrade. I think we all agree Vesa Toscala gives them better goaltending, right? And the big, sure. the big thing about Toscala is that he won a job in San Jose. He was a nobody. He was a nothing. Nabokov gets hurt, and he plays his butt off. I think what wins I a job. And right. so you're not getting a guy who is washed up, who is old no, but I'm already, and I'm not saying that they're the not going to make a difference. What I'm saying is, I, I think that in the core of it, yes. I mean, obviously a guy like Jason Blake and Mark Bell and all these guys are going to be great. The thing is, is that the core of this team, the Toronto Maple Leaf core, has not changed. You can't change the and core. You can't change you can't the core change overnight. No, I, yeah. and that's fine. Change, but I'm saying yeah. that, but to expect huge, you know, a huge step yeah. forward yeah. is not something that's realistic. We're, 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 we're agreeing with you for sure. I think what trying to say here. No, no, I'm agreeing with you. I think what he's doing is patronizing you. We agree with you, Adam. No, 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 no. Hold on, because well, you know, you're talking about changing the court. No one is going to say you should change the core of the Ottawa Senators, although last year at this time, everybody said you should change the core of the Ottawa Senators. They really haven't made any moves at all. They've lost a few players. But does this team have to upgrade, given the fact that they beat three excellent teams in the playoffs in the East in five games? Well, I, I don't think you necessarily have to improve when you look at their core, but I think any team, Leafs, Senators, anybody, if you're not moving forward, then you're moving backwards. You're standing still. You've got to continue to try and improve your team. You can't just sit back right. and say, well, we're good enough, so we'll just see what happens And the next difference season. between Toronto and Ottawa is Toronto has to improve in the offseason. Yes. If they don't do something now, they're and toast. Ottawa, Ottawa, Ottawa can do it if year, trade, Anybody but, who turned around and looked at the core of the Ottawa Senators and said there needed to be a change is somebody I think is extremely delusional. Oh, because, come on. No, I'm sorry, no, 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 sorry no, no, Michael. Come on. That team, was, Last produce, summer, that team you, was producing every single year. They were a flop in the playoffs for a couple of years, and everybody knew last year because they were under the radar that they would do well. I, unfortunately, and I have to be I have to be honest, I turned around and thought that the Pittsburgh might have had a chance against Ottawa last round. But when you look at what they're doing and what they're putting on ice, they don't need a massive yeah. change the, one, no. the, the way the that one Toronto does. Mark, though, with, with Ottawa last 
last year, and I think it could be the big question with Toronto this year then, was I think Ray Emery. Last year in the Absolutely. offseason, you're wondering, can this guy oh, carry sure. the load? Will he take them through? He did. This year now, everybody's saying the Tosco, uh, you know, signing is great, or, or, you know, making the deal for him, that's all fine and good, but is he proven enough to say that, yes, he's going to be that much better not. than Ray And we already and know that's what, And that's why I'm saying there is a question. Enough. There's three guys in the league like that. So who do you got? You got Mario Boudreau. You might still have Hasek. Uh, Kipper Zong. Kipper Zong. Henry Longfist. And there's nobody else. There's probably five guys in there. I wouldn't say five. And you're not getting one of those guys. Right now is proving to be an asset as far as the Blue Jays are concerned. I think he's got to stick to the game plan. I think you have to go with the game. If the game becomes a little bit more heated than usual, then I think you adapt to the situation. But the truth is, is you go with what you have right now. You stick to your game plan. I don't think you have the opportunity, the luxury to be able to afford it. You had Josh Towers, the first time you faced Rodriguez, had better not leave stuff out over the plate because everybody in the world is going to be asking why you didn't come inside and he better come inside on one of those first three pitches. I'm not saying throw at the guy's head, but there better be something over the inner half well, of the, the plate. There's some guys in the dugout ready to brawl. Well, which, is like, why you're not throwing, which is why you're yeah, not but what throwing that it in the head. You're what does that serve? What does that serve? What does it serve to send a message like that where, where not only are you more are you infuriating, you're inflaming the other team, you're, you're also giving the possibility of the other team of taking a lot more not infuriating, you're not inflaming, you're establishing respect because every guy in the Yankees dugout will respect Josh Right, until they think it's until they think it's a lack of respect for you to throw like that. You're not throwing that guy. You're putting it here. Okay, you know? He has control. He knows where he's putting it. You're not throwing it at the guy's head. You're putting it here. And he has the control to do that. And if he's not, he shouldn't be pitching. The problem I have with baseball etiquette, though, is it's bad baseball etiquette to yell mine as you're running past a guy. Yet it's not bad to go into second base or third base, spikes up, taking a guy out. Or right. sweeping across the bag wide at second to break up. Well, no, the but that's that well, not showing well, hockey, well, though. No, no, no. Or you're in not hockey, it's bad etiquette to, to put ice shavings in the goaltender's face, right? Yeah. But it's not necessarily bad etiquette to do some really wild. Well, well, no, but then that's the ridiculous thing, though. It's okay to do this, but it's so it's okay to throw at a guy to send a message to get back because he yelled in your ear. If you're a professional baseball player, you should know. There's a lot of hypocrisy. I'm going for the ball either way. No, no, you're not saying you're throwing at a guy. But if a guy slides wide on a on a double play at second base, that's baseball. If a guy comes to break up a double play yeah, but, but, but your reasoning your reasoning is that's baseball. Baseball. One that's time. That's baseball. I'm just surprised because you're you're saying that your reasoning is that's baseball. I think you brought up a very good point. There's it's a there's a lot of hypocrisy, there's a double standard. And when there's you look not. at what some people are doing on the field, I just don't understand that if etiquette, so think, to speak, like you were talking no, about no, no. before. If I think you think that the, the rules of baseball should be changed, that's one thing. And there's a good argument in hockey that people say a headshot should be hurt, but nobody's yeah. nobody's running around when a guy comes through the middle of the ice with his head down Great point. and someone delivers a clean head. No one's shouting hypocrisy. I think I speak yeah. for Blue Jay fans. Throw at him, pay him back. I'm not saying throw at his head, but make a statement. Because you know what? It can galvanize a team. It does, for it's sure. A and an OTR would appreciate it, because tomorrow we are all over that. A-Rod, as hard as this is to believe, can opt out of his contract. Oh. His agent, Scott Boris, says the bidding will begin at $30 million a season. He's one of the best regular season players ever. But with the Yankees since 04, they haven't done anything. Aren't doing anything right now. Is A-Rod a, a must-get for a team that can afford him? I think if you can afford him, you go out and get the guy. Now, granted, I know he hasn't done a lot in the postseason, and that's the biggest knock on the guy, but you can't argue what he's done. And I don't think it's fair, Michael, to put it on him and say he hasn't done much for the New York Yankees right. since coming there. He has put up the individual numbers. He's done his job. If the team around him hasn't been no, as good I, as a team, that's not all on A-Rod. You don't, I, guys like winners, though. You mean, like, no. people should pay the money to the people that have the big, the won big, championships. And that's the, 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 biggest reason why, the biggest reason why you want to go ahead and pay somebody $30 million, especially like Rodriguez, is the fact that you don't want him on another team. And if you have the pockets to go ahead, and, and if you have the deep enough the pockets to be able to sign a guy like that, who you do, sign them out because Toronto you definitely go don't want to be going out against like that. Who do you want to go He's, he's proving to be Mark, one. who do you want on your team, Rodriguez or Jeter? I'll take Jeter yeah. over Rodriguez. Everybody okay. wants Jeter, right? Is it, Jeter can get $30 million, not a chance. So it yeah. shows you this guy isn't worth his money when every GM in the league right. wants Derek Jeter instead yeah. of Rodriguez. Exactly. Why? Because he wins. And he makes everybody else better. And yeah, Rodriguez a, goes a into a clubhouse, and, a and I don't care if he hits 70 home runs. But Jeter's not going to win. Too, right? Since, you know, the, the, over the same period of time. Yeah. But I would agree with you. People want Jeter, and Jeter's not available. And A-Rod is, That's as you put it. Exactly. And I wasn't attributing the blame to him. I'm just saying that if you sign A-Rod, it's not like another sport, right? Your sport, basketball. If you get Shaquille O'Neal, and he's healthy, your chances of winning the championship sure. go up dramatically. I'm sure. not sure you can have the same impact on baseball because you're one of nine guys in the batting order. So well, but by, by that argument, then, I don't say that, well, he hasn't won much as, as a part of this team, right. so we don't try to bring him back. Right. I think the Yankees, if he wants to opt out, I think the Yankees should step up and say, all right, we were paying you 25. We would have rather you stayed with the contract. We'll pay and you 30 I, now. I, I think, think he's still going to cut you guys off. Is Pono a good signing before we go? Yes. It's uh, underwhelming, but I still think it's good enough he's going to fit into the system. Will they be improved this year? They had the huge improvement last year. Really only one change, Peterson. Capone win. I think they'll be a better team, yes.
Adam Reed, so you, people are watching the show, someone watched the show, and they yeah. said what? Yeah, they, uh, they called my agent up and they said, we want you to be the host of Kitchen Spaces. That's going very well. I'm still on promotional tour with uh, sportsbookfantasy.com and uh, new hotspot in Montreal, Wilson Supper Club. Beautiful people, beautiful place, celebrities. Uh, you should check it out.